we're going to be doing a randomized run uh, uh, of Fantasy Star 4. Uh, no experience with this game, so I'm going to be learning it right along with some of you. Uh, on commentary, we're going to have Dumpster Player 2. And then our runners are going to be Lady Ariana and, Com and Commodore. My apologies. Commodore Canadia 64. So with that, I will go ahead and let Dumpster take over as he will be as he will be introducing our run. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dumpster Player 2 um, from the UK. Uh, I am very excited for this run. Fantasy Star 4 was also my first uh, JRPG ever. Um, so uh, that's kind of one of the things that got me into um, the rando. It's just how much uh, respect I have for this game. So, uh, our two runners, do you want to say anything just before the run starts? Well, hello everybody. Uh, you may remember me from earlier. I'm Lady Ariana. And by the way, Profound Oops is actually the working title I had for this uh, randomizer when I started working on it like four or five years ago. Uh, it, it, it's no longer an oops, although there's still plenty of things that are probably broken and I'm hoping... Uh, Kath and I remember to save often. <laughs> Profound cancelling. Profound cancelling, yep. <laughs> uh, also with me we have uh, Commodore Canadian 64. I call him Cat because uh, I'm weird like that. <laughs> I went through a name change. I'm Commodore Canadian 64, used to be Captain Canadia. I gave myself a field promotion uh, after I won the uh, Rune Open tournament a uh, year, year and a bit ago. Um, this is my then, second year back, and very happy to be here. And then you had a race against me, hee <laughs> hee. This will be our tiebreaker. Yeah, so we, uh, this is this is our tiebreaker. Uh, in marathons, we this is the third time we've actually raced uh, in a charity marathon setting, and uh, currently we are one and one. And although I will say, Cap, the one time you did beat me was like what, like five second different, something like that. It's gonna that be a tight one. It's going to be a tight one. It's going to be even tighter today because guess what? We're both very rusty. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of rust on us today. And optimized okay. uh, speed runs is uh, more entertaining anyway. So. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and the best the best thing about uh, this seed right now is if it does go bad, Dumpster is our go-to to blame for this. Yeah. Ignoring the fact that I'm the creator of this randomizer, we blame Dumpster Player 2 for any bad seed. Uh, it's just tradition at this point. I am the, the root of all problems. I also summoned PD3 into this world. Yes, um, that that's uh, that is very true. So we have you to blame for everything that's about to transpire today. Um... So while we're still getting th a few things set up here and there, um, I can explain a little bit about how this randomizer works. So um, the reason we had donation incentives to for you all to pick the team, and that actually has been met now. Uh, it's been finished. We have our team of five. Uh, once you start with that team of five, you are actually locked into that team for the entirety of the run. Uh, so our team, of course, Thanks to your wonderful donations, our team is going to be Alice, Demi, Raja, Ren, and Seth. Uh, normally a very scary team uh, because Demi, Ren, and Seth are all... Uh, none of them can use techniques. Demi and Ren can't be healed by normal means. Uh, but we're playing a new feature. Well, I, I can't say too new. We're playing a feature of this randomizer that enables classes. Uh, so what classes does is... Um, Every character has a set of classes they can become, uh, quote unquote, and they will have the same skill technique set and stat gains throughout the entire game, but it may not be what they were in vanilla. Um, so the, in doing that, both Ren and Demi can be healed by normal means. So that means I can heal them through techniques, I can heal them through items, which is great because that was always an annoying part of the original game. So uh, while this team on paper it looks mean, because we're actually playing classes today, it won't be nearly as as mean. 
So we are having still a little bit of setup right now. Uh, Dumpster, anything you want to add to what I uh, just described? Uh, yeah, I'd say that there's also multiple modes in this uh, randomizer. So um, like in other randomizers, there's a you have a uh, list of objectives that you need to meet. These could be killing a particular boss, uh, or it could be um, defeating uh, the, the area boss of a particular location. So another thing that's been changed is that the enemies which used to be at uh, the end of a dungeon are also randomized. So after, I believe, eight objectives has been cleared, then the way to the final dungeon is opened to, to the edge. Um, so that's kind of like how this randomizer kind of ends, is by completing your objectives, getting key items to open lo objective locations, and uh, defeating the final boss. Yes, and we're playing what's known as the Hunter's Mark. Uh, mode, which means that our objectives can be either finding or finishing a location or defeating a boss and any mixture of them. We do have voyage mode, which is strictly going to locations and, and just completing those dungeons. Uh, we have boss hunt, which is you have to find the, the eight bosses listed and defeat them. And then we have hunter's mark. Uh, we have a couple other um, modes as well, including Ring Hunt, which you have to just basically find the five rings of the stars, which were key items in the vanilla game. You find all five of them, yeah, the way to the dungeon, uh, the final dungeon opens up. Um, so there's a lot of, of, of other things that have kind of changed in the game. We, again, we do start with five random characters, and we're just basically plopped right into uh, one of many different locations. Um, for the sake of this seed, we're actually starting out with two uh, with two items, one of them being the Hydrofoil. Uh, so the Hydrofoil is the fastest vehicle in uh, the game, and it also lets us cross water. Um, so we do have that option right away. A lot becomes available with the Hydrofoil. The other item we have, which is one I just added in, which is not in vanilla, it's, it's known as the Raffi Cap. Um, while in development, I realized I couldn't make like a menu toggle like Final Fantasy uh, for Free Enterprise where you could just toggle encounters on and off. Um, so I basically, if you wanted encounters or to turn off encounters, you would have to do that at seed randomization and it would be a hard lock throughout the rest of the seed. Um, after watching some people run uh, Worlds Collide, uh, Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide, uh, I found a way that it's like I saw the Moogle Charm. It's like, I bet you I can make an item in the game that does the same thing. So we have the Raffi Cap. So as long as that item is equipped on anybody, we don't have encounters. And if we want encounters, we just take it off and hopefully remember to put it back on when we don't want encounters. <laughs> yeah, yep. Encounters in this game are brutal. <laughs> they, they can be, for sure. Um, looks like everything is all set to go. Um, would you like me to do a, a countdown? or? Sure. I'm on the start screen, ready to go. That is where I am, too. And yeah, Good luck, Lady were... Ariana. Good luck, Cap. Okay, on uh, I'm gonna count down to five. So on on go, uh, go. So five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, so uh, as you can see, we don't start in the hometown. Uh, <laughs> we start actually on the second planet because your location that you start is also randomized. Um, our runners are currently just checking what classes they have, so as Lady Ariana mentioned, uh, the characters uh, don't necessarily have the same skills and techniques that they had in the original game, so there are maybe three or four classes that they can have, and uh, every run they will learn, if, if, it, if they are that class, they will learn the, a different technique and skill um, at the same level every time. So, while the runners are moving through these shops, they're trying to think, okay, what techniques will I have access to in the end game to defeat the final boss? What items do I need to buy to supplement my classes? Um, for example, uh, a big feature of this game is the, the buff system. So, once you have a buff, you don't lose it until, uh, for the rest of the battle, apart from one buff. Uh, and we have magic defense buffs and physical defense buffs which are very important because 
um, the bosses can very easily one-shot your entire party if you don't have the buffs up. So they're just checking the shops to see if uh, there's any items that they want. They don't have the money to buy it right now, but they'll come back for it. Um, meanwhile, uh, I I'm gonna reference Captain Canadia, even though he's now a Commodore. Uh, but that used to be his name, so that's why I'll probably say it sometimes. Uh, is ignoring the shops and going straight to uh, straight to Matavia, I guess, probably to check the shops there. As well. Never mind. Uh, Stand correctly, he's gone to Zealand, which makes sense because um, there are chests there to collect, and then probably Matavia, or maybe Rykov's into Matavia. So um, I guess. Is the Tommy, for someone who's never seen this game before, is there anything stand out that you're like, what is this? <laughs> I guess uh, if, if you have any questions, let me know. Meanwhile, uh, I will say that there's eight objectives. It's not on screen, but the runners will have access to them. And those are four bosses, I believe, in four locations. So... Once those objectives are complete, they'll be able to fight the final boss. However, the final boss is very, very difficult, and they'll probably need to be at least level 40 before they even attempt it. Or maybe 37-ish, depending on their classes. So, so I... Go my ahead. apologies, Dumpster. I was going to ask, does this game have any connection to the Zelda franchise? Because I'm looking at the environment, and I don't know if it because of what it was released on or because of a connection but I'm getting a very Zelda vibe from the desert um there is no yeah it's not connected um although there's a lot of fun of both games I uh I can see uh the graphic style in this has aged very well even though obviously it's Sega I feel like the graphic style in this is very charming um Currently, Captain, because he just got the Ice Digger, which is a vehicle, so there are three vehicles in this game, and they allow you to um, basically traverse different environments, like uh, ice places or um, across water. The other benefit that they have is that they can fight in battles. They, they, they do get into encounters as well. So this current location that Captain's on, or Commodore, sorry, um, is uh, near an end game area, um, so it gives lots of experience. Even though uh, Commodore's party is only level one, the vehicle is a fixed level. So you're gonna get a lot of experience here, probably accelerate to like level 20 or so, and then you can start to clear out a lot of the early fights just to, to having that level advantage. So getting the vehicle gives them a chance to power level really early. Yeah. Um, the experience falls off very hard, but um, when you're level 1, any experience is, is useful. As you can see, we went from level 1 to level 11 in like less than a minute. So that's very worth it because uh, the way this, uh, what well, I like a lot of RPGs, the way you get techniques and spells is through level up. So um, being able to access some of your uh, mobility, so... There's a spell called Highness, which takes you out of dungeons, kind of like an escape rope. And Ryuka, which allows you to teleport to a town that you've been before. So, um, like a lot of games, maybe it's not too difficult to go through the game uh, at a leisurely place, but trying to optimize your movement to save those two, three seconds every time, uh, rather than walking to somewhere, teleporting to somewhere, um, helps a lot across the span of it. So the early first 10-15 minutes will largely be checking locations to the easy locations which don't require a battle or very quick to access the key item in that location. So for example you saw there, um, and Lady Ariana is going to get it now, the Sapphire, um, that's a key item which allows them to access uh, somewhere called Tono. So effectively it opens up another location for them to check which may lead to an objective being complete. So early on, to generally, you want to check as many chests as possible 
because the, the key item, the, sorry, the chests are also randomized. So this is this planet that we're on now is the planet you start on. So usually the chests here are rubbish, but um, because it's randomized, they could be anything. The general idea is to get some good equipment so you can smash through fights because um, if one person goes down, you need to take a turn to revive them and maybe it's the person with damage and because the abilities are randomized, it may be that only one or two people in the party can do much damage. So things like that, where you're trying to get items from chests, even if you don't want them, maybe you could sell them for gold to buy in the shops like they're doing now. Um, I guess one thing I'll mention is that there's two ways of getting a key item. There are non-boss locations and boss locations. Non-boss locations, like the two we've just visited, the cave and that town, they, there's a chest which will have the key item for that area. And it's always the same chest. Then there's the boss locations where upon defeating the boss, you will get the reward for it. So the boss locations obviously take longer because you have to do a fight. But the advantage of that is, one, you get experience that you're going to need for the final boss anyway. Two, um, it may be an objective that you have to fight anyway because part some of the objectives are bosses. And three, uh, you also get an item. So there's kind of like a, a balance between trying to spend the early game getting armor and equipment um, and also trying to go as fast as possible because if you spend too much time getting armor and equipment it's diminishing returns because um, you could have just uh, you, you maybe didn't need that to progress so it's a very difficult balance and because of the randomized class system it will sometimes depend on what party you have because some parties will be very strong early and some parties need levels or are very weak early. Um, I haven't seen the classes of our runners so far, but when they start making um, macros, I'll find out. So I guess that's another thing to mention is the macro system is very unique in this game. So uh, what you just saw Commodore there, there do is create a macro for death spell so death spell is an insta kill ability and it will work in this fight um for these lower level fights they can be insta killed but for major bosses they won't be able to um what macros do is that instead of having to manually input your um your commands before the battle you can set up a macro to just make it uh, execute that kind of set of five commands in this way you don't have to manually select your abilities every time you can say okay this is if i need to do an insta kill this is my one this is my healing macro this is my attack macro and da -da -da -da. now the thing that makes this even more cool is the, con the combination attack system so like i don't know what came first chrono trigger or this but i think this but uh, in Chrono Trigger, for example, if you do a wind attack and you do a fire attack, you can make a fire cyclone kind of thing. Uh, it's the same in this. There are combination attacks um, where um, you can do more damage or you can do unique effects if party member A does this spell and party member B does this spell. With macros, you can set that up. Um, so you don't have to manually. And this saves a lot of time across a run if you reuse a macro over and over. Um, so I can see they're both inside the basement. Um, although Captain does have some levels, mostly because of the vehicle fights that Captain took. I say Captain, it's Commodore now. Um, but uh, Lady Ariana has done more looting, so... We'll catch up on levels, I'm sure. So, uh, Dumpster, would not er, would now be a good time to jump in with a, yep. uh, with a few bits of information? Yep, go ahead. So, while our runners are doing their thing, uh, I just want to remind everybody why we're here today. 
Uh, we are raising no money for NAMI, which is the National Association for Mental Illness. Uh, this is Ran Random Mania's first year doing uh, doing charity fundraising, uh, and the decision to select NAMI as a chosen charity is in memory of OTP Lawyer. OTP Lawyer is a former Random Mania administrator that cared deeply about mental health and was, also, and was also raising money for NAMI. He did unfortunately lose his battle with colon cancer, and Randomania is dedicating Randathon in his honor. So, in his name, hopefully we can do a lot of good for others. Personally, uh, mental illness is something I take very seriously myself as someone who suffers from, you know, major depressive disorder. So, seeing people come together, it's a beautiful thing. So, every, every dollar... We can put together help. Why don't you say, dumpster? Indeed. Right as as well as we do have, I am seeing some new bid wars open coming up for the Resident Evil remake. We have door randomizer versus lock randomizer. That will be closing at the end of Metroid Planet. So get your bids in. And then for Resident Evil Remake, we also have select Jill's uh, Jill Valentine's costumes. That will also close at the end of Metroid Planets, and here shortly, I'll share an update with what the options are. Tell oh, you what, I love Resident Evil randomizers. However, door randomizers completely destroy my sense of where to go. Um, I, like with. Knowing that there's random item locations is one thing, but knowing if I go through that door, every time I run, it's a different door. <laughs> it confuses me so much, and I get lost. So good luck to whoever's potentially doing that one. Um, some things uh, ju just uh, there was, uh, as we saw, the same enemy that Commodore fought um, insta-killed um, Lady Ariana, and that's just because of the level difference. In this game, uh, something I'm just going to mention that someone mentioned in chat, the void. Macros also turn force turn order, yes. So, um, the way agility works in this game, so the speed stat, um, is that it's not guaranteed the person with the highest agility will act first in a turn. Um, it's, there's, it's more likely, but there's some range, there's some variance to it. So macros are useful also because you can guarantee that that person will always go first in the turn order. However, if a slow person goes first in the turn order by a macro, uh, it doesn't matter what the agility is of the people behind them. Uh, they will be as slow as the slowest person in front of them, if you know what I mean. So where this really comes to um, be a problem is... Uh, when you're putting up your buffs. So turn one against every boss in this game is very important because the magic defense and magic... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, and physical defense buffs, if you fail to get those off before the enemy, you can just die turn one instantly because, uh, for example, if your magic barrier does 60 worth of defense, let's say, and an enemy is doing 100 damage, you take 40 damage. It's a simple subtractive system, there's no percentage kind of subtraction there. That also means if your magic barrier is 60, and the attack is 60, you take 0 damage, or 1 damage. Um, so it's very important to have a strong barrier, because the stronger your uh, the magic defense and defense buffs, the less healing you have to do, so the less turns you have to spend healing, the more turns you can be doing doing damage, so obviously that speeds up the run immensely. I feel like it um, takes a special kind of patience to be able to do turn-based uh, randomizers. Uh, why so? Just be... I'm, I've never been a big turn-based person, so you uh, there's the patience of being able to go through and everything, and the way they fly through these menus, I can never do. 
Yeah. And then I... on top of that, everything's randomized just to mess with you. Yeah, so not only do you not know any of the items that are being mentioned or the spell names, because the spell names are very weird in this. There's, um, Highness. Would you ever guess Highness is like an escape rope? Would you ever guess, um, uh, what is... Maybe what makes sense is as an ice, but foie is fire. It, you just wouldn't. <laughs> um, but, um... Yeah, I would say that this was just a game of my childhood. I was playing this when I was six or seven. I remember being stuck in a very particular boss because I was too young to understand what I needed to do and I needed to use an item called the Psycho Wand to remove a barrier, otherwise I do zero damage to the boss. Uh, but I didn't know that you had to do that because I was too young to understand it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, that gave me a life lesson, you know? Um, so Lady Arena is currently going through the boss that uh, Commodore did with the insta kill, but because Lady Arena doesn't have the insta kill skill um, as the lower level, um, it's taking more time. Uh, but yeah, so uh, about the yeah the the, ma the macro system, so. Uh, it basically allows you to input your commands so you don't have to put, input them every turn. And it also helps you stop making mistakes because, uh, for example, when I go to use my healing, I'm like, okay, I'm going to heal on this character. But when I get to that character's turn, I completely forget what I want them to do. <laughs> and then no one heals. So that kind of helps as well. Um, this Sky Tiara is one of the objectives. So there are four bosses which part of an objective system and four locations which they need to be. So once that happens then the way to the final boss is over. So they have to start plotting uh, like their setup for the final boss very early on. Right, yeah, I, I mean that's what I do uh, and, and you know obviously everyone has their own strengths um, but as soon as I see my classes I know uh, who has the magic defense buff, if I have one, who has the physical defense buff, uh, is the person with the magic defense buff fast, because if they're not, that's going to be a problem for the final boss. So, the final boss does a move called Cancel, which uh, had a different meaning in the 90s, but now it removes your magic defense buffs. Well, it mo removes all of your buffs. So, uh, the buffs that are in this game are magic defense, physical defense, uh, agility and I believe accuracy and crit is a separate, separate one. So the agility buff allows you basically to always, almost always act before the boss does. Um, which is very important for your healer because the final boss um, often will two shot you if you don't. Uh, if your healer acts before the boss attacks and then he acts after the boss attacks then you're just gonna die so you always want your healer to be able to act before the boss to keep it consistent so i've um, gotta ask hmm? uh, i've gotta ask on this one uh is it the randomizer that makes it so easy to get like one or two shot or is that just this game in general that is this game in general uh if you well you wouldn't have seen speed runs but speed runs from this game are absolutely brutal so you'll be two hours into a run and your barrier your magic defense caster just didn't get the um buff off before the enemy uh attacked for the first time and the whole party's dead <laughs> it's that it, it's very brutal so like we need to go to extreme lengths to try to keep it consistent so we can put on agility enhancing equipment to our characters to try to avoid the boss getting off the attack before we get the buffs off. Um, we can have particular armor which may resist uh, a boss's attack, so even if they do get off their attack, we can survive one turn and then heal up. Many things like that. And of course the classic, we've got levels, we'll be fine, <laughs> um, is, is, a, is a strategy. But once again with the final boss, and this is uh, come back to well, 
sometimes is a good thing and sometimes is a bad thing is I prefer to be slightly high level for the final boss just because it's so variant. Um, it only you be the boss takes between six and ten minutes depending on your classes, and if you die at eight minutes, well, it doesn't matter if you did everything perfect. Uh, beforehand, your opponent will catch up because the boss is so cool. Um, so, currently, the. Um, I think on Lady Ariana's side, Ren and Raja is very strong. That may be enough because Raja has the death spell ability to be able to insta kill the next boss so the rest of the enemies can catch up. A lot of the bosses that we've been seeing are minor bosses, so. Um, there are two distinctions in the randomizer, minor bosses being kind of enemies that you will see on the first world, low level, they have low HP, low attack generally, and um, they can be killed with insta-kill abilities, in this case, uh, as you can see. Minor, major bosses are kind of past the second planet and above, so there are three planets that you go to in this game, um, increasing difficulty, and... Uh, they cannot be killed by insta kill. So you'll see maybe here insta kills happening, and you're like, well, surely this game is easy. We just insta kill every boss. Very soon they come into a stage where I'm, I'm, it's practically over. Uh, there's going to be more difficult battles to come. So it's luring them into a false sense of security so it can molly wop them. Yeah, it's, it's, you'll see the final boss. It's, uh, it's called the Great Equalizer. As a nickname among <laughs> among our Serratos because uh, yeah it, you just it will just destroy you if it doesn't like you sometimes uh, uh, oh so that the final boss moves cancelling and removes all of your buffs which means you need to spend another turn putting your buffs on but now that's another opportunity where the, you don't have your magic defense or your speed buffs where the enemy can one shot you so that move I believe is one in twelve chance to happen. Um, and it can happen maybe zero times or four times, and each time it happens, you're losing 30 seconds to a minute. So, uh, speaking of uh, speaking of 30 seconds to a minute, uh, just going to take 30 seconds to hop in here and share that we do have a five dollar donation from Miss Cinnamon T. Miss Cinnamon T, thank you so much for supporting Nami today. We appreciate you, and we appreciate everybody coming out to wa uh, watch Randathon and participate. I can see uh, what they're both attempting to fight Reface. So Reface in the original game was like the super boss, uh, actually unbeatable. Um, but in this randomizer, they're in a different location, so they are beatable. Um, Quite lucky to be in this location because this lo what well, I was gonna say that, but the new okay. I was gonna say I, I changed my mind when I, I said quite lucky to be in this location because um, as a recent update, this enemy used to do the same move. All he does is magic, which is a massive AOE magic attack. However, it's been changed recently for them to also do AOE physical attack. So. You can't just itemize versus this boss or put up your magic if you have a magic defense buff. You need to have both good magic defense and magic uh, physical defense. So just to verify, did we just see our first death with Lady Ariana right there? I did see that she went back to the menu. Yeah, it was a death and uh, it's not surprising. This The base stats on... Well, there's, there's two things. It's that that ability is the strongest ability in the game. It's the one that the bosses use all the time. And secondly, this lo the way the randomized bosses works is that the boss will keep its moveset and its resistances, but it will get the stats of the location that it's been randomized to. So in this case, it's quite a low HP. It's about 2,000, 3,000-ish HP location. But uh, it has very high physical. So um, right now, when it's doing the magic version, um, there's not much damage being done. But when it's doing the physical version, it's almost killing. 
Yeah, because I saw it drop uh, Seth from almost max health to 17 health in one shot. Yep. So I believe the way it's coded is because the originally the physical version isn't in the, in the game. When you don't see the moves, the moves pop up with something like that. If it is the magic one, I uh, say magic, and if it's the physical one, it will not show anything. So this is the magic one. You weren't kidding that if you don't know the name, the names of the spells, you yeah. do not know what they're gonna do. Yeah. I, I honestly, they, there is no consistency. The only one that kind of makes sense is what is like water, kind of ice. But I, I believe the way uh, the original Japanese um, kind of ideas for the names are kind of there's some sort of German connection. Uh, they're similar to some German words, but. We can see that even though uh, Lady Ariana came into this location first, Commodore uh, Canadia finished first, and that's just due to levels. Um, you can see that a lot of healing needs to be done because the boss hurts. Um, but when you have more levels, you get more magic defense and more physical defense. And so you take less damage, and so you need to do less healing. Um, but now, they're approximately the same level, so... Right, uh, right quick, everybody, just as a reminder, we do still have Bid Wars going for the Resident Evil Remake, and I do have those options for you. It looks, lo uh, it looks like we have the door... Uh, the options between the door versus lock randomizer, as well as Jill's outfit, which you can have Jill be either in her BSAA, casual, military, or stars outfit. Get your donations in to get your vote in. Uh, help affect the run and decide where we're going to go what, uh, and how we're going to look. And don't forget, we are at $3,200. So can we push it to 3,500 during this game? I think we can. What do you say, Dumpster? You think we can reach 3,500? I think Stars Jill needs a couple of hundred uh, dollars for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got a lot of game to go, so please donate if you can. Um, yeah. So I, I'm I'm curious about something, if I may ask. The the characters in the party is the way uh, this is completely random but is the way they follow you based on the order they're in the party or just, is it just randomly assigned no so you do set a party order so um, generally you want to put your tankiest characters in front there's no the only difference that the party order makes is uh, you're likely with, of being hit so I believe something like well, the person who's in front is most likely, and the second most likely is second position to the third. It's something like 30% is, is in, uh, likely to be in front, and then if you're at the back, it's like 17% or something like that. Um, maybe less. But uh, me, like an idiot, because uh, there's a character called this uh, called Rune, who's like the black mage, the wizard, who he was my favorite character growing up as a kid. And, uh, well, he is the squishiest character in the game, but I was like, Rune's the coolest, he's the leader, he's going in front. I didn't know that made him <laughs> being, like, twice as likely to be targeted by enemies, and it would go down a lot. So, oh. um, go ahead. Uh, the boss that, the boss that, uh, Commodore just, I'm assuming it was a boss based on, you know, how creepy looking that thing was. Uh, what is that thing's name? Uh, it's the profound, well, Dark Force 2, I guess. Um, so, in previous Fantasy Stars, there was just the Dark Force. Um, and then in this game, there's two more versions which are increasingly more powerful. Um, Dark Force 2 is, uh, well, the reason why there was an exit, I guess, or, is uh, actually harder than Dark Force 3 when the stats are randomized. So, 
the, the attacks it does is unique because it does a strong single target attack, but most, well, almost all attacks do um, attack your physical defense stat, but this attacks your magical defense stat, which is um, always less, well, it's, it's just weaker in general than uh, physical. Uh, just to wait, due to the way the armor, like, say armor gives 100 uh, physical defense, it will give like 30 magical defense, which is a problem because your team is constantly getting one shot and you're having to revive them and it's taking turns and it takes a long time. So some people just say, forget that, I'm just gonna eggs and I'll come back later if I need to. <laughs> so. it, it's one of those games, it's, it's striking me as one of those games that, like Kingdom Hearts, my friend Bree would ask, did y'all really beat these games as a kid? <laughs> yeah, I am amazed, actually. I I don't know, because I remember phoning up um, some sort of guide helpline uh, to be able to understand where to go. <laughs> it's so weird that that even existed back then, but uh, yeah, there was some phone number, or I don't know if it was like a game magazine or something like that, where it'd be like one pound a minute. I'm stuck at this place in this game, and I'll tell you where to go. So, oh, the Game Master's helplines, I remember I, those. I can't remember, but if you said that to someone today, they'll just, just Google it. <laughs> just Google it. Yeah. Oh. So, I, well, I only spent maybe £10, £15. Pounds. It's only this game. I was going to ask, how did your parents react when they when? when they got the phone bill and were like, what is I, this? They never questioned it, actually. I don't know if they ever knew. So, let's hope they just they... paid the bill. Yeah. They didn't, didn't ask me about it anyway. Maybe my dad called it and my mum did some stupid just didn't know to ask her. So, I don't know. But, um, in any case, uh, there's a question in chat. Is this Ring Hunt or Hunter's Mark? It's Hunter's Mark, so... We are our boss, our objectives are Dark Force 1, which we just saw on the screen die. Well, uh, is that? Yeah, that's Dark Force 1, and below is Dark Force 2 on the radio area on the screen. Um, so this light shower move, uh, two androids, androids are weak to electricity. Uh, they're, they're double weak to their ability because androids have very weak magic defense. They're also weak to electric damage. And so androids will just get wiped uh, against this boss unless they have physical, uh, magic, uh, electric resistance. Which is mostly there's one piece of it. Which they just got. Uh, <laughs> which Lady Alpha just got. It's always good to get the thing that would help you out from the boss that just killed you. Um, but yeah, so the objectives is Dark Force 1, Zeo, Van Bite, Sky Tiara, which are, those two are just common enemies, but they've both beaten them. Uh, Rappy Cave, Strength Tower, Valha 4, Zeo. So, that may not mean much to you, Tommy, but the people who play the game, I just read it out. Um, I believe that... They only Zio and Valhau 4 are still to do, but maybe Strap Tower as well? I'm not sure. So just real quick, I'm gonna jump in with a bit of info as well. Please remember that we are raising money for NAMI, the National Association for Mental Illness. Did you know that having a mental illness can make it challenging to live everyday life and maintain recovery? Beyond the individual, these challenges ripple out to our families, our communities, and all the world. So for every person we help, we don't just help a person. We help a family. We help a community. So every dollar we raise helps improve the world bit by bit. Just seen on the screen, uh, the lady around has got the the buff macro on the bottom, and there's a healing macro that they're using now. Um, but uh, one thing I noticed is that this boss outturned the magic uh, magic buff 
faster, which may be a problem for the final boss if that person can help him this up. You have to see it to believe it where you're just like, oh, the final boss, you're just going to do hundreds of damage over and over again. <laughs> Can you let me heal, please? <laughs> Can um, I have a turn to heal, please? Yes. Can we have a break, sir? A tea break, perhaps? But this is Dark Horse 3. Um, I believe this is Strength Tower. Um, if so, it has a high physical stat, but a low magical stat, being Strength Tower. So... Um, the, that's quite good for this boss because it's only AoE is uh, magical and um, uh, the physical one isn't that strong. In fact, I think, no, maybe I'll stand correct. I think corrosion is a spell that does physical damage. It's, it's not a problem for either of them. Dude, I'm not the one to ever use, uh, use spells or magic. And like my RPGs, I tend to go the physical route. Yeah. This game has a unique system as well, where it has something called techniques and something called skills. So techniques are in most RPGs uh, kind of like your general spells, which are they take up uh, mana or in this case TP. You can use them as many times as you want, but when you run out of TP, you have none. Skills are kind of like the physical spells in a way. They don't take up any uh, mana, but they you only have a certain amount of charges on, until you do a, a rest. So you're trying to create your macros in a way, so the macros are like pre-built commands um, that you can reuse to speed up battles. Um, you want to, if you have skills in them, you want them to uh, not to use the same macro every time because if you run out of a skill, let's say a skill has three charges and you use that macro three times, now when you use that macro, your character's gonna do nothing. And you'll see like a red flashing thing when you go to the macro. So the point of the macro is to speed up your um, the fight. But if you now have a character, and you know, I can just see their flare was still uh, red it out. If, you, if your character is now doing nothing, then you're not really speeding up the fight. So um, you, you're literally having to maintain your action economy, no matter what style you play, and just hope that while you're trying to maintain it, you don't get flicked like a fly across the room. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of the bosses in this have unique problems. So as you can see, the Commodore Canadius 3, uh, the problem is electric damage again. And this is a very high magical stat. And we have two androids, which um, Ren has high HP, so he can kind of survive, but they're taking massive damage um, from this spell. Uh, so I believe that spell, uh, well, because Captain uh, Commodore Canadio got the, the buffs off this time, it didn't kill these guys. But it's still doing a lot of damage to the two androids. The two androids being Ren and Demi. Um, ah. So, that is a... They're, they're usually very physically strong versus physical attacks, but um, the difference between the two androids is that Ren is kind of tanky, has high strength. Demi was also, for a non-android, quite tanky, but for... Uh, against magic, she evaporates. So me, I... Well, me and... Commodore Canadian have a joke to just leave him on the floor for the final boss because she can't survive. <laughs> you just have to spend every single turn healing her and it's just not worth it. You just kind of gotta cut your losses on it eventually, huh? Yeah, if you're using one person's turn to heal one person, um, you might as well just not do that because it's 10 seconds every turn that is not doing damage basically. So oh, this I, is very... Sorry, go on. Uh, my apologies, uh, but I noticed Commodore just got hit with a, like, a beam that mm -hmm. everything turned to question marks. Yeah. Um, that may be... So, in this randomizer, in this particular flag set, 
there's something uh, that's called randomized attacks. I believe some bosses have new attacks that they can do, and also some of the enemy boss AI is, is changed, just to make it a bit harder for some people to play this too easy. You know, if you played hundreds of hours of this, you kind of sometimes want a new challenge. But you can see Demi is on the floor. Uh, me and Captain's <laughs> uh, <laughs> strategy is popping off. But uh, the boss is in the final phase for Commodore Canadian because the boss used Reinforce, which is um, when it, I believe it's when it's below like one sixth of its HP or something like that. Using the ability, which greatly empowers its attack, defense, speed, and such. At that time, you kind of want to go all out attack if you can before it starts doing the moves. But it's a very tough fight very tough location so this spot has um, pretty high HP, pretty high speed, very high magic and so it's big AoE magic attacks is a problem. It does have a weakness to fire and to light which is why um, well you wouldn't know but Gifu is a light um, damaging spell and Mapaway is a fire damaging spell. I believe it does 1.5 times that. But uh, something in chat earlier that made sense is the magic fantasy. Thu is thunder. Um, it looks like thunder, but it's light elemental, which doesn't make sense. Gra's gravity also doesn't make sense. I can see it. I can see it. But you, as a kid, you wouldn't really make these connections. Um, you can see uh, Lady Ariana is having a little bit of trouble with this, and it's mostly just because it's a very difficult fight. Captain also to redo this fight I believe. The, so, uh, sorry, just to mention one thing is that the Palmer Ring, which they got, uh, I don't know if it was Ladea Tower, um, it makes you take one damage, I believe, from electric attacks, it's electric resistance. Or may maybe not one damage, but it resists electric. Um, Captain put that on Ren, I believe and just let Demi die, so... Wow, well, as Lady Aaron is pulling on Demi, and is healing up here. Gets through the fight! Really good. So, are mo a majority of the attacks that the bosses like to use, mul like, uh, multi-hit attacks where they hit the entire team or multiple members of the team? Yeah. Because I'm awesome. noticing a lot of that. Uh, more often than not, the physical, uh, if it is a single target, it's the physical attack, um, and if it's an AoE, it's probably magical. Um, but uh, I believe what our runners are looking for is uh, either Zeo the boss, so there's one of a boss that they still need to fight, or something called the Bauhau King which were from Valhalla 4, so those are the two objectives left. Once those are done, they can complete their grind and fight the final boss. But, uh, in... uh, my, my bad. Uh, I was just going to ask, are they, so would you say they're making good time so far? Uh, yeah. Uh, give it six objectives and 44 minutes is really good. Um, however, rando being rando, sometimes you get, you have seven objectives done uh, 30 minutes, and you're like, ooh, this is going to be a quick scene. And then <laughs> you just you get put on a wild goose chase, and your items behind another item, which is behind another item, which is behind a really hard boss, so you need to grind them, and then behind another, you know, it can go on. So it's you, you don't really know, but I would probably say I could see this in uh, 115 or so, um, but depending on uh, what, what's in store. Uh, both runners have good levels, so you want to be around at least 37, I would say, uh, for the final boss, and I can see around 35, um, which means that you shouldn't have to do too much grinding, uh, because there is kind of a balance between grinding early to be able to defeat the bosses quicker, but then if you beat, manage to beat the bosses, then you wouldn't have needed to grind because you can get the XP from bosses. So there is a balance between should I stop and grind because I need to fight the boss later 
or can I get my experience from um, trying to find objectives anyway? So, um, is this Dark Force 1 and it's been in that location? So, this should be quite easy. Um, but yeah, in terms of preparing for the final boss, the kind of checklist, the mental checklist in my head is uh, how is the the biggest problem to deal with is the magic defense, the magic attack that it does, Majid. Um, one, do my characters have the HP to survive it? And two, how fast is my barrier cast and how strong is it? So the way the buffs work is that for, if you're casting a magic defense, or generalizing here from the villain game, there are some differences in the manga, uh, the higher your strength, for each point in strength, so if you have 80 strength, you reduce magic damage by 80. So you want a character with the buffs to both have a high uh, stat in terms of the strength of the barrier and also to not get out turned by the final boss before they can cast it. So maybe some rearranging of equipment to increase the, to shift around the stats to try to make sure that the final boss doesn't uh, currently, Commodore doing the thing that I always do, which is walk in the wrong room. <laughs> now I can turn back. Um, there's, there's a key item in this location. Um, I don't know if that was the right room, but... Okay, no, no, it was a different room. Um... Another thing to track is what spells you have, so apart from the buffs and who has them, what their speed is, you also want to have a reliable way to heal, since you are guaranteed to need a lot of healing versus the final boss, no matter how strong your party is. So you kind of want the boss to do approximately 200 damage AoE, maybe if you have a big barrier, 170, 150, so you need ideally one character that will uh, be able to heal your party while the other four characters are doing damage. Um, sometimes you'll need two characters to do that, but obviously that means um, you have less turns doing damage and then it will cancel your buffs and then you need to reapply those buffs and then you're still only having two, three characters doing damage and it's just wastes a lot of time. Um, I haven't seen the Eclipse Torch yet, uh, mentioned in chat, um, but yeah, so I just saw on the back character, the green man, uh, Raja, that they got Nasa, which is the big AoE healing, however it costs a lot of TP, so they won't be able to use that constantly, wait, maybe I, maybe it isn't Raja, because I can see Raja only has enough for two spell casts, which doesn't make sense. So it must be an Alice or something. Um, but in any case, uh, it costs 36 TP, and the highest TP that they have right now is 180 or something like that. So they're going to need more than that, or a way to recover. Uh, currently, Lady Arena doing Salus fight. I believe Captain Commodore Canadian has already done this one. Um, I'm wondering what the reset was for. Is that particular item that... Or macro, I guess. That she needs to set up. Okay. Setting up a healing macro here. So, uh, remember when I said about... This is kind of like almost doing your um, final boss macro setups. Once you've got enough levels and no other characters are going to learn any spells that actually matter, um, you can you might as well do your macros, uh, your pre-built commands now because every turn that you you spend to doing a useful macro is five seconds or so that you're not manually inputting commands and you save. So the earlier you can you start to use your macros, the more of the run that you will be using them, the more time you save. So, if you're gonna be setting up a healing macro now, well, if, yeah, if you're gonna need it now, you might as well do it, because 
you can reuse that for the final boss. Um, in this case, because the boss does quite a lot of damage, it looks like he's gone for doing two characters here. Always a good thing to make sure you're covering your butt when they can wipe you out quick. Yeah. This uh, location is one with... It has the highest HP in the game, so it's quite annoying. But secondly, it's doubly annoying because this boss has no weaknesses. So there's no amplification of damage to take it down quicker. So um, it looks like 600 damage per turn approximately is, is happening here. Uh, the boss has 9,500, so that's 15 turns, uh, 16 maybe, um, and so you kind of have to think, okay, how much TP do I have? Do I have enough healing for 16 turns of this? <laughs> um, there is a lot to this run that I haven't even mentioned, I'm sure the runners will wish I did. Um, there are so many little things that you can do to optimize your your gameplay so for example as, as Commodore Canadia is walking through this dungeon they'll be thinking they'll be this is what we call like a low state where you have time to think you're on autopilot you just walk through a dungeon you've done this hundreds of times and now you're thinking okay what's my next problem what do I need to solve do I for example at this point in the game maybe there's no problems in terms of bosses because they're quite high level and they've already seen some difficult bosses so there may be not a location that you're worried about, but you're thinking, okay, what do I need to do to prepare for the final boss? Do I need to set up these macros? Do I have my healing macros? Do I have my buff macros? Do I have my attacking macros? Do I need to shift some equipment? So even though you're not doing any of that as you're walking through these dungeons, um, you're preparing in your mind, okay, I've got a checklist. What do I need to do? If I find my item here, do I go straight there? Do I need to grind? It's uh, it can be uh, if you as you do more and more runs, you obviously don't start your first run kind of thinking like this. You just go through, and as you play more and more of these randos, you'll be kind of anticipating what the problems are. So the classic is you go through the entire game, you get to the final boss realize I don't have enough healing for this <laughs> so or, or um, no so in some randomizers none of your characters will learn a healing spell so you need to kind of as you do more runs you encounter more problems and try to mentally prepare for them so uh, one thing I can see is um, Seth uh, has Mesa, which is great AoE healing, it will full heal the entire party apart from Ren, and maybe Rush, but, um, it's, it's more than enough healing. However, we don't have enough TP to use that every turn for the final boss, so we can find another sort of which I've just seen on Alice. Alice has a skill called Miracle, which is uh, medium AoE healing. So maybe you could do one turn of the big heal, and one turn of the medium heal with a small heal. So that way, um, you kind of balance out your, um, your TP usage. Um, saying that, I've just seen that on Lady Arena's screen, they ha also have a spell called Ataraxia, which restores your, basically, your mana and TP. So maybe every three turns or so, they can use the big heal plus that. Um, I see that Eclipse Torch has been obtained, which may be a trip to the Garbage Tower, we call it. It's called Garubuk Tower. It's a key item which opens that location. So, it looks like um, Commodore Canadia is about to enter the same fight, uh, which will take, uh, take him a couple of minutes. So, so what exactly is the uh, the Eclipse Torch? What does it do? Oh, um, so in the vanilla game, it used to... Well, uh, I was going to say wait and see, because uh, Lady Ariana was about to use it, but cleverly used it off-screen to save some time. Um, 
it, there's usually a, a carnivorous tree start blocking the path, and the eclipse torch is used to uh, kill them, so you can enter this path here. So it's a key item which is used uh, to open up this tower. This tower in the Vidina game is an absolute nightmare because the normal encounters that you face here are extremely strong. And you you go through this entire tower and then you get to the final boss and you're like, I've got no resources left for this boss and this boss is hard. So I can see a divergent in roots. So Commodore Canada has decided I'm not going to fight that boss, it's going to take too long, it's not worth it. Uh, I'm going to go to another location. Um, so it looks like a divergence of roots, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, I guess Tommy, while they're going through the dungeon, there's a... ...mention, uh, in sort of time. Um, but yeah, so there's a divergence of roots, and... It may come down to just a 50-50, or is the boss that they're looking for, or the key item that they're looking for, um, in this spot or not? That that exit may come back to bite Captain Commodore. I keep saying Captain because Commodore Canadian used to be Captain Canadian. <laughs> so. Hey, maybe they should have put an uh, uh, incentive for every time you say cut. Captain instead yeah. of Commodore. <laughs> miss, uh, miss title. Uh, if, if he wins this race, he'll be, I don't know, Navy Admiral or something. I don't know what goes after Commodore. I don't either, because Commodore is like, they command multiple ships, I believe. Maybe General? <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, okay, so Zeo, this is the one of the I don't know if Cap uh, Commodore has done Valhalla Fort, but if he has, then this is the last objective. Um, so this is the enemy where me as a six or seven year old tried to... Well, I basically over leveled. Uh, you're supposed to be level 20 or so for the fight and I was level 40 and I kept doing one damage. You have to use an item to neutralize his parry, otherwise you just do not Yeah, so you kind of need that to fight this boss. Um, so this shouldn't be a problem for Commodore um, due to levels and there is a big light weakness, which all of the ultimate weapons in this game, so that's a randomizer only, um, uh, do light damage. So 1.5 damage times damage to most bosses. Oh, nice. So they definitely get a nice little buff when they have the, those ultimate light weapons. Yeah, for sure. And when you give attack buffs to those characters, that attack buff is effectively 1.5 times. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, it may come down to just a 50-50 or a Captain, avoiding getting sent on a wild goo chase. Uh, but neither, at, at this point, I don't think any enemy apart from the final boss is going to be a problem. It's just a matter of how fast you can do these fights. For example, these triplets fights, um, it's particularly kind of frustrating because um, the boss here usually has about 5,500 something like that but that's not split so each one has 5500 hp now um, so it takes a long time to kill i hope so that... it doesn't oh, go, go ahead. ahead no yeah it doesn't split the hp uh, because there's three enemies it's just like you get 5500 you get 5500 yeah. The bosses get 5,500. And in some siege, you don't have much AoE, or in this case, it looks like Lady Arena's running out of their good AoE spells. So the Saint Fire is good damage, and these Posse Bolts uh, also do a lot of damage. So, what would you say is the number one thing 
like the number one thing that could kill a run for Final for boss. fantasy. Final boss every time. <laughs> every time. That's why. That's why they call him the Great Equalizer, it, huh? It doesn't matter what, how your run has gone, how strong you are. If you make a mistake in putting the commands, so you're, you, you're meant to heal or you're meant to put your boss back up, and you do something else, you'll just sometimes it just kill you. <laughs> it's uh, I've lost a run. Uh, the last run I did, um, I just put in the wrong macro. I meant to put in macro command C and I put in D, which was not my healing one, and then did the big AOE twice in a row and killed me. So. <laughs> I was like, oh, come on, but it happens, it's, it's practice, it happens again. Both, both runners will be, uh, will be in good shape for the boss, I think. There's some good solutions I can see that they have. Um, it looks like uh, Lenny Ariana is actually two or three levels above uh, Captain, so Um so Commodore's just doing some grinding just to get up a few levels. So I mentioned that 37, I would say, is the minimum viable range even with uh, a god squad. So probably going to get up to around 30, 39-ish. Uh, as I can see, I think one of the party members is level 36, which is two levels behind. So uh, depending, oh Demi, because Demi was on the floor at some moments. Um, but unfortunately, uh, because, like, doing that, uh, that difficult fight not only took a long time for Lady Arena, but gave a key item which sent her on a wild goose chase, uh, which also takes up time, so, um, I don't... It's the air castle, I believe, that she needs to go to. But I don't know if she has the wisdom mirror. Which is, I think, what you would need to go there. Um, but, remember when I said that you can be 8, 10 minutes into the final boss and just brruh, brruh, one yep. shot your entire party? That, that can easily happen and it can easily be, even though couple of minutes behind now that easily be a comeback kick. Okay, there it is. We'll be kicking ourselves. Because this is a... Uh, this check takes, what, 20 seconds? Um, and that gives the key item to um, get the, fine, the boss the, to open this final boss dungeon. So, I guess since Commodore is in the final boss area now, we'll see quite trippy um yes it is it, 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 the music is also very final bossy um uh i'll explain i guess some things about the fight uh so number one is uh is your boss good enough i believe uh, commodore's party is around level 40 now so given a an okay speed cast i don't know what the speed is on the characters but um the levels are quite good um secondly how's your healing it looks like they've got both the the best heal and a way to recover the, their mana so shouldn't run out of mana if they optimally use their things uh i guess now is when commodore is doing the setup so you need to think okay i need a macro uh for my buffs turn one buffs I need a single target heal, I need a AoE heal. Uh, in this case, it looks like maybe Commodore will do... Yeah, so Commodore here is setting up two healing macros. One of them has the healing plus mana restore, and one of them just has the healing. Well, instead of doing the mana restore, they're going to be attacking. So that's just a way to make sure that you, know, you do the most damage. You might as well set two different ones just to because every turn you're doing damage is less turns the boss is attacking right so um yeah what i saw there was a buff uh two aoe heals uh a single target heal and there's an all-out attack macro 
Um, so the final boss, uh, to spoil, has three phases. The first phase is mostly single target, it's not too big a problem. And this phase is quite useful to, uh, well one, you're going to use your buffs, but if there's any single target attack buffs you can do to your characters, you might as well do it now. Then there's phase two, which does uh, quite heavy AoE damage, and uniquely does electric AoE damage, which can be a problem for some of our androids here. However, if they have this item called, uh, there's two rings, a Palma ring and a uh, Lycross ring, I believe. Uh, those give electric resistance, and so that shouldn't be a problem. Then the third phase does many things and most of them very scary so uh i believe it has uh, a one in 12 chance to just cancel your buffs that turn which means you need to spend the next turn reapplying your buffs and if it took multiple turns to um apply those buffs so for example maybe you had one character to do a magic defense and you had another character and that same character the next turn did a physical attack buff well you're just not going to do that physical attack buff because it's too slow. You need, you need to stop doing damage. So 1 in 12 chance to do that. I believe there's a 3 in 12 chance to do a single target attack. Um, a 1 in 12 chance to put your characters to sleep, which may not work on androids. Uh, I'm not sure, it depends on the class. And then there's a 50-50, I believe a 6 in 12 uh, chance to do just massive AoE damage. Now the big kind of wombo combo we call is when it removes your buffs and because your agility buff is down it immediately does this massive AoE damage and next thing you know three or four characters are dead trying to revive them but when you're trying to revive them maybe the one that was supposed to do the magic buff died and so now it does its attack again. As we can see um, massive AoE electric damage just got <laughs> dealt out there and I believe Demi is not going to get back up from the floor because with the androids um, you don't want to have to keep healing them and I think in this case they are not they're actually humanoid because in, in, in the randomizer there's a class which makes them human so that normal healing spells can heal them rather than them only being able to heal themselves so um, Demi is just too squishy, I believe, for Commodore right now. He doesn't want to spend turns having to constantly heal them. Um, so we'll just leave them. Alone. So. Yeah, because. Uh, sorry, gone. I was just going to say, I have noticed that all of the characters that get knocked down, Demi goes down the most. Yeah, she, she does have some classes which make her tanky, but in this case, yeah. D is faster than Ren. I think slightly faster than Ren, but just the uh, HP losses uh, uh, doesn't make up for it. But maybe because, well, this is the problem, right? You heal, and then <laughs> and then the AOE comes out again. Um, if, if we can get sound on maybe captains, because the final boss team is, uh, is what we call a man Um... But yeah, so ideally what Commodore wants here is for either the revive and the heal to go through before it does the damage, or for it to do the damage and then the revive caster after, because um, yeah, I, I think uh, in this case, because Demi is a humanoid, which means she can be healed by normal healing. Yeah. It's, it's a it's a reasonable decision to keep her keep her uh, so you but just you gotta find that balance between Demi getting destroyed and keeping Demi in the game. Yeah, I think if it was halfway through the fight, Commodore wouldn't revive her because um the deeper you are in the fight, the less value it is to spend a turn to get up a damage dealer, right? Um uh, but here's the cancelling. This is the scary part. Okay, lucky. Lucky, actually. Demi's down again, but that was a very fortunate um, 
attack that on Demi. Was... Because... Yeah, I was say, that... that's a scary moment. It, so, if if that was the AOE there, I believe three characters would have died. But it was the 3 and 12 chance that it was a physical attack, and luckily it was. Um, Ren and Raja probably have enough HP to survive it, but the problem is, is those are the only two characters alive. You can't, it's really hard to stabilize the fight, because you need someone to revive someone, then you need someone to heal someone. But then your, your buffs are down, so you're taking more damage, so you need someone to revive someone, and to heal, and to buff, and it's just too... But it looks like stabilized. Um, uh, the macros are well. The reason why the macros are yellow is because there's one uh, caster in that macro which can't use their abilities, and it's because Demi's on the ground. Another scary, another cancelling, but gets off the buff this time, so there shouldn't be any problems. But managed to replace him just in time. So, I believe Commodore, I haven't been tracking the damage that well, but I believe about probably halfway through the fight, uh, maybe two thirds. The final boss, I believe, has about 11,000 something HP, and it looks like he's doing about a thousand per turn, so. Um, well, not anymore, I guess, because Demi's down, but it's about 700. Yeah, the cat. The, there's always the cancelling. Um, the cancelling summer. Oh, there we go again. Oh, lucky again. Okay, so this time it did its one in twelve chance to sleep. So, although Raja was the agility caster, um, so it's not as big a problem, and immediately woke up. So, the sleeper basically. Uh, you either need to spend a turn waking them up, or I believe between one and five turns or something like that, they can be out of commission. Oh, wow, so uh, it, it can put somebody out for a good while, then. Yeah, and if it's your healer, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it can be a problem. Um, but yeah, because the, these are classes, so if one comment mentioned Raja hitting like a truck, um, Raja, I believe, all complete for Commodore in 114-ish. Well done. Well done. Unfortunately for Lady Ariana, it's, uh, although Commodore was probably ahead by a good couple of minutes for most of the run, it got very close to the end and it was a case of Commodore said, nope, I'm not fighting that boss. And Lady Ariana fought the boss and got given an item which sent them on uh, an adventure which hasn't paid dividends. Well so, so Bilbo would not have gone on that adventure then? Yeah, well, we can think of, uh, instead of a master dragon, it's, uh, it's a massive wolf with uh, AoE damage. Sauron didn't do any AoE damage, right? I believe it was just his soul just switched it. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, some things I guess to mention in the run is that, um, is, uh, the character system, so Raja, uh, is probably a strength-based monk class, so he does a lot of physical damage, but has low TP. So it's kind of like a Grizz in vanilla. So that's why he's sitting like a truck with the rods. Um, but yeah, another thing about the rando is that sometimes uh, the key item is just the last place you check for whatever reason. And the next time you'll go to that location and it won't be there. And you'll be like, I wasted my time. <laughs> it's always the last place you check. That's the rule. Just a reminder, everyone, that we are here raising money for NAMI, the National Association for Mental Illness. Uh, this is uh, this is Randomania's first year raising money for Carathon with, uh, with the marathon. 
Did you know people with depression have a 40% higher risk of developing cardiovascular and metabolic diseases than the general population? People with serious mental illness are nearly twice as likely to develop these conditions. That is huge number-wise when you have, as of 2021, 47.2% of adults in the U.S. with mental illness receiving treatment, and 65 point, uh, 65, the words, English, 65.4 percent of adults with a serious mental illness receiving treatment. Then you also have 50.6 of uh, youth age 16 to seven, uh, six to 17. So, the more the more we can help people, the more or the more we can improve people's lives, and the more we can look out for each other. I would uh, personally, I'm a big fan of the Stars Jill uniform. So I don't know what the incentives are where they're at now, but you know, I'm gonna push yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah, don't forget that you have the. Uh, with your donations, you have the uh, chance to affect the runs for the Resident Evil remake. The first bid war you have is for the door randomizer uh, versus the lock randomizer. And voting for that will, cl will close at the end of Metroid Planets. And then you have Jill's outfit for Resident Evil Remake. You can set Jill up in her BSA, a BSAA outfit, her casual outfit, her military outfit, or her STARS uniform. And I don't know about you, but STARS. Fantasy STARS. Fantasy STARS, yes, indeed. Uh, Commodore, just a comment. Someone said that uh, Demi was down for pretty much the entire run, but I saw you trying to revive her. What was that about? What, what, I tried, why did you make that mistake? I tried <laughs> once just to appease the fans. Yeah, but the and second she, she went down again, I was like, nope, done. You're staying on the ground where you belong. I tried, yeah. Demi. I tried. Um, but what? What made you decide to run away from the one boss? You were just like, nope, not going to do it. So, there's... I, I knew I was on the hunt for both Dark Falls and Zeo at that point, and um, Ladea Tower, when I ran, is because Ladea Tower is only worth 2,000 experience. It wasn't going to get me levels. It wasn't the boss I needed. It was just going to waste my time. But I did risk leaving a key item I may have needed there, so that was a calculated risk that I had to take. And then, oh, cool. Shoot, as man. again... That was uh, Dark Force 2. And then I ran from... Uh, after I got the Arrow Prism, I decided to do a quick check at Soldiers because it's really quick to get there to see if that was the boss I needed, and it wasn't. Um, and I knew it had to be in one of either two other locations. Again, possibly leaving the game we need, uh, needed there. It wasn't the boss I needed, so I zipped out. And I lucked out in the fact that it was, in fact, in Air Was the Arrow Prism in um, the Gumbia Stem? Is that thing? Lady Ariana checked uh, Arrow really late. Not. Arrow is not there. Or maybe it was the cycle. I remember. Yeah, it was the cycle one. Yeah. Um, Arrow Prism got late. I think that was actually in um, the, uh, Nervous. Well, yeah, so you needed this. So, do you still need the cycle one to enter Nervous? Yeah, so cycle yeah, one so, was needed to get Go Mode. Uh, yeah, so a big kind of, I guess. You, you got ahead quite early with your vehicle strats of getting some levels, which Lady Arena did, which gave you some uh, insta kill opportunities in the sandworm and such uh, to accelerate your lead quite a lot. But then it got quite close because um, uh, you both uh, were at the Soldier's Temple at the same time. Uh, but Lady Arena fought boss, got the Eclipse Torch, and then went to immediately went to Garuba Tower and then oh, pulled no. out. That was triplets, so each triplet had 5,500 or whatever HP, 
and then oh, it was no. the item so got sent on a wild goose chase so it was actually you had quite a, a big lead early and then it started to narrow and then that was the like the big divergence um about 10 minutes wasted on our wild goose chase um I, yeah oh geez i decided to take the um the extra time waste by traveling back and forth but i wanted to try to hit a lot of quick locations on both planets pretty early so that's why i went to uh climb it to get some experience do a quick check and then went down to uh gumbius to get those that quick check out of the way and then i was decided screw it let's go to esper mansion get that out of the way and then i headed back to motavia to finish the the bulk the alshaline which had two checks and then the uh tonno which had two checks which i think out. when you have uh in your case there was only bosses that you needed to find it's quite a hard balance yeah. sometimes to decide do i fight this boss who isn't an objective because it might give me the key item i need to find the boss which is an objective or do i skip it and hope that uh the next place i go to will have the boss um, and in soldier's temple in particular it's a very quick check to see if the boss is the right one but it's a very long fight especially salus who has no resistance and 10,000 HP, <laughs> so... There, there was uh, no way I was fighting him without absolutely having to. Yeah. Lady Arana is in the final boss now. Um, I believe has a couple more levels. Uh, there were some scary parts in that fight. There was, uh, oh. was it three cancer links that you had? It was it was three or four, but it was it was bad. That was a bad fight. It was scary. Yeah. It was, um, I was hanging on. She outturned me uh, that Did one you... time, but luckily it wasn't in a kid. Did I see a guard room usage in <laughs> I think yeah, you might have used let's... the guard room. <laughs> I was trying I was trying to use the guard, the guard rod guard, and then yeah, it yeah, the robe and then oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Funny um, story about the guard robe, I don't know if you noticed, but that was the first amber eye that I turned in, not realizing that I already had the frayed mantle and I did it by mm. accident. Did not need it. Oh, another thing is that uh after the two cancelings you did get outturned twice. But it was sleeping and a uh, single target was yep. I mean, so lucky. You, you were level 40 or something, right? So that was actually 40. quite unlucky. 40 I don't know, yeah, I don't know what... Uh, was it Seth that was your barrier caster? Uh, I didn't use barrier, I had Alice oh, cast Seth. Yeah. Yeah, I, well, I don't know who what the speed was on, on the character, but... Um, generally above 55 is quite nice. Um, but I don't know. Maybe because she's a black. Is she a, a white mage class? I don't know what she. She was a cleric, I believe. Okay, so it's probably yeah. quite a Death was a shadow then. priest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a good run. Uh, very, very well played. Uh, I guess, is there any other comments that you have about your run on your thought processes? and generally the game so the seed the seed started off pretty generous uh on everything except for weaponry um that's also why i had to leave rappy cave when i first saw rephase because i didn't i didn't have um any way to do any significant damage to rephase and i didn't also didn't have armor on on seth so that's why i dipped out of that one early so that was about the first roadblock that i came to um but as far as just having to get levels out of the way early it was lucky enough to have the insta kills on the two vile and monster bosses so i had plenty of levels early um i found the reflect store in aido so having that right there was good knowledge was perfect um so it was just a matter of kind of going through the motions essentially taking care of the key item or the, the objective locations finding two uh you know the minor objective bosses super early was really nice the seed was generous uh once i got myself established with proper gear then it was just a matter of an item hunt and uh finding those last bosses which apparently i got lucky in finding the arrow prism before i found the eclipse torch because <laughs> well, i would have done the same thing had i fought soldiers i would have been off the garbage tower yeah, yeah. um for some reason where was the arrow prism was that inside the... i'm more than sure that Obvious. was in uh no, the wand was in Gumbius. I'm pretty sure oh. the arrow prism was in um, Nervous. Fairly sure. Okay, but yeah, so the cycle one led to the arrow prism. So I yeah, think yeah. if there was one thing that Lady Arrow and I probably wish um, she did differently is before 
going to Garuda Tower to check um, Gumbius, because it's so quick, like it's 20 or 30 seconds. Um, but maybe it's because they're also looking for bosses, right? So maybe it's because it's a non-boss check that I told them to save some time by not having to do that. Um, but, you know, you can always make the kind of case of, okay, if there was no RNG, this is always the correct strategy kind of thing. But a run will say, you know that thing that was a really bad idea? Well, <laughs> that was the correct place. <laughs> you know, just have to hope on average, kind of like, you know, the correct play. But I was saying that it's quite difficult. This game is very difficult to do fast because there's many factors that go in. You have different classes each time have different problems to solve. Is my healing good? Is my damage good? Is my buffs good? Is my buffs good? But is the person who's casting it slow? You know, so as you're going through these dungeons, you're you're an autopilot, your hands are just doing the things, but you're thinking um, okay, this is what I need to solve next. If this you know I need to make sure I have this for the final boss. There was a couple spots there where I uh I kind of had to sit and think about what my next steps were, and I paused for a second. I was like, okay, wait, now where do I go? Mashik in um, uh, Karsh Tower would be pretty true. <laughs> that was awful. Yeah. yeah, luckily I got through that fight one piece. Did Lady Ariana find um, the Red Cross Ring or the Palmer Ring? Uh, the Palmer Ring necklace. was behind the Ladea Tower, Dark Force 2. <laughs> I'm so upset right now. <laughs> so, like, when you actually needed it most, <laughs> it gave you the ring. Yeah, I'm so upset right now. That's... I mean, not that I care if Demi survived, I just... That would have been super helpful because my damage... I was worried because I, I was starting to think to myself when I was starting to fight, I'm like, where is Lady Anna? Like, if I'm going to have this slow of a PD fight, Losing like losing Nathu was uh, like another 300 damage. Did you have right? so God slower fight. instead of Psycho? Because Raja is doing out 500 damage here, so I think yours is doing about 200. So must have had the God one instead of the uh, one. I thought I swapped it. I'm pretty sure I did. I'll have to check that later. Maybe this is the shit. Maybe Raja. Oh, possible. I wonder how many cancelings. Well, anyway, uh, he's absolutely storming through this fight right now. Uh, yeah, and that's what I was concerned about. Might, might even not get any cancellings if this. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that was an extremely fast PD3 fight. No kidding. That must have been about what five, six turns, something like that. Unreal. Yeah. That's I had a slower fight because I got nothing but cancelled and I was and down yeah. down uh, a person. Three like yeah. I said, about three hundred to three hundred and fifty uh damage per round. So I yeah. could have easily taken a round or two off. I have to say that, that that final boss music is uh is one of my favorites of all time. It is it just encapsulates. If you didn't hear that music, if you didn't know what was it, it's like okay, that's final boss music. I know that that's what that sounds like. <laughs> Who's the best? What a great track. Oh. Uh, <laughs> how, uh, how, uh, I was going to say, Cap, how bad did you beat me there? <laughs> GG. 14 minutes. Yeah, I think it is much. I just, yeah, I nearly, I nearly hot dog that scene. Yeah, yeah I we, was we, lucky we... enough to find that uh, Psycho Rod, or, uh, Psycho Wand early, and then I led me to the Arrow Prism early, and that's where you I did, went first. You, you didn't take Dubs as advice and fade Toto, right? <laughs> I did not. What I, was I did. I did fade Toto because I followed Dumpster's advice. Was it good <laughs> advice? I don't know. No, it wasn't was because Psycho Wand was there. That was required. Uh, Wait, Psycho Wand was no, in Tono? No, no, it wasn't in Tono. I didn't go to Tono. I actually went through uh, Valley Maze. Okay. But I didn't. When I got to Tono, because I got the Psycho oh, Wand in Valley was. Maze, I went oh. straight to Nervous from there. Oh, I said fade right, Tono, but... not Valley Maze. Oh, no. right, 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 right. <laughs> In any case, uh, yes, yes, I guess it I... was in Valley Maze because I was thinking to myself, um, I, I should, I was just about to like highness out of there, but I didn't. I was like, no, no, I should keep going. You're right, that was in that. Uh, I went to the wrong room. <laughs> I thought I would have done. Uh, I was just gonna say, just a quick, quick uh, summary, I guess, of the run, which is that uh, Commodore had a very early lead.
couple of minutes and then it kind of converged around Soldier's Temple where you were both at Soldier's Temple at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference is that um, Commodore saw the fight and said, uh, nope, I'm not fighting this guy, not here, and exited and, and you fought, so it took a couple of minutes and then you got the Eclipse Torch was sent to Garuda Tower, which uh, Commodore didn't, so uh, that was largely uh, yeah, and the, the, the thing is, it had one of my, or had one of those objectives actually been in Garuba Tower though, that yeah. would have really changed yeah. the direction. Yeah. It's just how the nature of this yeah. game is, where Cap did know how, and but would have had to come back later get that Eclipse Torch again. That's just if if it had been triplets instead of something else, then he that's also knows how this game of, uh, Ladea Tower of Dark Force Two, which you fought. So that was also probably two minutes or so. So it's very close considering, you know, if there was even the same number of uh, locations visited. Yeah, I kept going right for the places I know objectives could be, and then I'm like, all right, do I really have to keep going? I was hoping I wouldn't actually have to go to the uh, the free checks uh, just to try and find the items. It's like, oh my god, this is a hat trick seed, isn't it? It didn't end up being a hat trick seed. Actually, it only ended up needing air castle, but ugh. It was a hat trick seed to me, anyway. Most uh, most important thing was Demi was dead, pretty much the entire PD fight. Right? So. Are you kidding? <laughs> Demi uh, Demi was one of my primary damage dealers in that fight. Oh yeah, no. She she died in two. I tried to revive her. She died again. She died. Uh, I re tried to revive her in three, and then she died again. And I was like, screw it. She's dead on the ground. Yeah, you of course <laughs> you put you put the Palmer or the or the right. I did not get them. Did. You didn't get either. I didn't of them. Get them. Okay, I had not, those. not one. The yeah. Palmer ring was in Ladea Tower, which he had Tower of, so... Yeah, yeah I I didn't get either. God. Well, GG. GG. Yeah, GG. Oh. Y'all did amazingly. That was definitely an interesting game to uh, to watch, and I definitely learned some new things. <laughs> I will Glad say there's a lot of words in that game that I recognized you were saying words, and my brain went, what? So here's the one thing about this randomizer. Um, the thing was with the Fancy Star, I'll mention this real quick. Uh, Fancy Star loves to have uh, words that don't make sense. And uh, <laughs> especially with their techniques and everything, uh, te their techniques and skills. One thing about the randomizer is there is an option for you to simplify both item and technique and skill names so that if you're used to something like uh, Final Fantasy, um, in Fantasy Star, the fire ability is known as Foy, uh, Gi Foy, uh, Nay Foy. But if you have the option for uh, the simplified wording, it becomes fire, fire two, fire three. So it's a lot simpler for someone who's never played a Fantasy Star game, wants something a little bit different, but is more used to traditional uh, naming conventions on that. And the best thing is that you can actually play with the simplified names, and if you want to raise somebody who's used to Fantasy Star and wants to play the traditional names with it, you can. That does not impact uh, the randomization at all. So you can basically be playing on two different languages, technically, and it'll be fine. See, I thought of everything. At least I try to think of everything. Y'all really did do an amazing job. And I, I know chat, uh, chat was digging it. Excellent. Yeah, some things in chat. So, as we, uh, <laughs> as we go to wrap everything uh, up with y'all's run, uh, where can everyone find you guys? Let's go ahead and start with our commentator. Uh, 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 dumpster play. Uh, I guess uh, twitch.tv slash dumpster player two underscore in there. It's basically my name. Uh, but I guess uh, better to find me in the profound uh, discorder. Discord. <laughs> profound discorder. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Lady Ariana. You can find me at uh, twitch.tv slash Lady Ariana. Um, I'm also uh, in the Profound Discorder as well. I'm also one of the RPG Valkyries, so you can find me floating around there. Um, but 
Yeah. Perfect. And then last but not least, we have uh, we have our Commodore. Commodore, uh, where can people find you? Uh, Twitch TV, Commodore Canadia sixty four. Uh, also the Profound Discorder um, Discord. I also have a uh, a Twitch account. I like to post uh, what's called Retro Rando Replays, uh, which is same name Commodore Canadia sixty four. And I also have a YouTube channel as well, Commodore Canadia sixty four YouTube. Wonderful. I'll just, uh, I'll just say that uh, if you are a fan of the original game and you want to try out the randomizer, we are you know a very welcoming community. Uh, welcome to join the Discord and ask any questions. Uh, we'll help out and all that. And you, you feel free to uh, bug report and make me work because that's what everybody does. It's like, hey, Ari, here's a here's a bug for you. It's like, oh, gosh darn it. <laughs> Well, everyone, um, that has been our run of Fantasy Star 4 Profound Diffusion. Thank you to Lady Ariana, Commodore Canadia, and Dumpster for join, uh, joining us to help raise money for NAMI. I've been your host, Tommy Two Stone. I'm gonna, uh, I'll be back with you in just a few minutes before we get the next run started. So uh, I just want to go ahead and say thank you for being here. And we'll be continuing the show shortly. <laughs>